if you have any questions or uh, anything about where you're up to, what ideas yeah. you've got and how you can implement them, then yeah. feel free to ask away. The floor is yours. You get yeah, to yeah, yeah. have it all. Sure thing, Vicky. So, um, I mean, like I found the course um, great. <laughs> I think great doesn't really even describe just um, how awesome it is. Um, it's been a bit of a slow start for me because um, I was involved in a eight week um, online um, coaching program to get my business up and running. Um, things didn't really work out the way that I wanted them to. Um, but like I knew that there was, it was a part of my coaching that needed to be upgraded. Other, other than myself needed to be upgraded. Um, I knew that I needed um, some sort of mindset coaching um, that would go really well um, with the vision that I have for um, what I want to do um, for my clients and for myself. Mm -hmm. And then I jumped into, into the uh, Mind Body Food course, um, hit a snag, got really, really busy with this course that I was doing. Um, didn't go the way I wanted it to. And I was like, man, this is an opportunity for me just to get head on into this course and, and just to really absorb it. And uh, that's what I've done. So um, although I feel like I'm slightly behind, um, I feel like I've also been able to make progress at the same time. Um, you've already marked my workbook, so I want to thank you very, very much for doing that. Um, and where I'm at currently um, in the, in the um, course and, and, and so forth, um, like Vicky, I feel I've got this very, very thin layer that is stopping me um, from going ahead now and actually putting myself out there that I'm available for coaching. Obviously I need to for the practicum part of the course, but I so want to do it Vicky, but I'm just, I'm not getting there. I, I feel that there's a little bit of confidence. There's a bit of conflicts internally stopping me from moving forward. Um, so that's where I'm at. Like I really want to move forward, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I'm staying still, you know? Okay, so you use the word feel there. I feel like there's something, and you yeah. even use the, the metaphor, a thin veil that's yeah. holding me back. So if you dig into that feeling a little bit, what would you find? What would that feeling actually be that is holding you back? The feeling, I guess, is the unknown. It's that unknown realm of how am I going to be accepted, you know, in front of All these right. clients, or how am I going to be perceived? Okay. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that's the, 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 uh, the thin layer. There's maybe a little bit of confidence that I, I just need a little bit of that boost to get me going. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say it's thin because like, I know once I poke past that veil, I know, I know it's going to happen. Okay. So what would you need to do? Do you think to poke that veil? Poke through the veil? I just, I just need to get started. I just need to put myself out there. I need to get amongst the Facebook group that you've created and just, just to start the process. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to do. I just need that bit of a push sometimes just to get me there. But okay. that's what but I need to do. It's interesting because we always know what we need to do. Yeah. But it's, it's the why we don't do it. And yes. that's, that's got a lot to do with the stage of the course that you're actually up to in those middle, uh, those fantastic middle stage two modules on mind, body connection, chronic stress in modern society, neuroscience, where you learn all the brain hacks and how to disrupt these patterns that hold us back and then yeah. move into the positive psychology. So at this point in time, can you, can you tell me of another time where it's been really difficult where you've been in a similar position where you know you could do it, but something's held you back and you did it anyway. Funny thing is, is that I have, I have coached before. I've coached four people in the past. Um, so, and that was okay. So <laughs> I don't know why I find myself so, so sort of stuck now when I've actually done some coaching in the past as part of a practical course, but yeah, it's, it's just like, it's just a weird thing, right? It's like, I know I can do it. The evidence is there that I can do it. I just need to put myself out there. That's so awesome. what would be a good first step for you to get started? And here's where I just want to point out. Yeah. If you don't have the chat box open, Dana's actually said, hi, Craig, 
one day I will be seeing computer issues at the moment. Now, Dana actually is in New Zealand as well. Oh, great. And Dana is in the beginning, well, she's moving through the, the first few modules of the course. Yes. So you're not too far away from each other in the course. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop that in there simultaneously as I ask you, what would be a good first step for you? A good first step would be for me to get in contact with Dana and, you know, and to make that start to, 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 to have the conversation and the, the uh, invitation about um, coaching. I would like to definitely pursue that and, um, and get into the Facebook group as well. You have been posting and being very supportive in the Facebook group, which is fantastic. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it's that fear of, um, you know, am I going to be as good as the other yeah. person if I offer to swap a session or are they going to be better than me at coaching? But what I want you, you and everybody who's going to be watching this know is that it's, um, and Dana's just put a comment there. I see that. Yeah. Is that we all need to take our own time to find our way. But confidence comes from consistently showing up, even when we don't know what we're doing, is just having the faith that we'll figure it out. And I know yeah. faith is something that you draw from. It so is. bring that into how you coach. Bring that in to support you as you're finding your feet. How might you do that? How might your faith support you to lift you up and give you that push when you're doubting yourself in order for you to take those first steps and then get into your, your groove and find your momentum? That's a pretty good question. Um, it's, it's kind of one that I really need to have a good think about. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking back to the, to the prior experiences where I felt like this and I just took that leap and I did the coaching anyway. Oh, feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, and essentially, I guess I you know, probably need to think in a sense that I'm not there to fix anyone. I'm simply there to serve. I'm simply there to listen, to have those powerful conversations um, and not to put that undue pressure um, and that sort of heightened expectations that I have to be, you know, this whole different person. Um, like I am a person that serves naturally. That's just who I am. That's just in my being. <laughs> um, and I know that if I, that if I bring that to the table and I, and I listen and I listen very well um, and I don't judge myself and I don't put undue stress on myself to be someone who I'm not, uh, I think that is, yeah, I think that's going to help me if that makes sense, Vicky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were just talking a little bit about there about not being who you're not. Yeah. So can we flip that so that we can yeah. focus on who you are so that we can really identify and become more aware of what gifts do you have to offer? Yeah. Um, Vicky, I think this. Yeah. Who is think, Craig? <laughs> who is Craig? Um, I think Craig is the... He's the sort of guy that doesn't always necessarily have um, belief in himself, um, but he will walk through head on back to see the potential in, in anyone and everybody um, that I meet. So I see something um, bigger in people that they don't see. And mm -hmm. I feel like I can give people um, a gift um, that I don't necessarily have myself completely but i'm willing to help people discover their own gift and to, uh, and to help them um just reach the the kind of higher um potential of their mental physical and and emotional well-being um that's craig the guy who sees more in anyone else than he sees himself <laughs> essentially um and that's quite emotional for me to say i haven't ever been able to really say that to, to too many people. So my eyes are kind of watering up, but like it comes from my heart, you know, that's where it comes from. Thank you for being vulnerable because you just yeah. said, you just described yourself very well. That's, that's the kind of person I'd want to work with. What do you think, Dana? Is that the kind of person you'd want to work with? 
you know, when you start to really focus on who you are and what gifts you have, and she says, sounds like you have a lot to share, Craig. Thanks, Dana. So, you know, when you watch this back, because even though this is a shorter conversation and not necessarily group coaching, it is a sort of a coaching conversation that we're having here, which is a fantastic demonstration for the other students and graduates. So just as Dana actually said there, listening into these meetings is invaluable. Others in the same boat, great community. So this is why I think it's so important, even if people don't turn up, and it's great to turn up even if you're not going to participate, but watching the replays back and really having that observational learning and understanding when someone says that, oh my God, what would I say? And then just listening to what somebody else says and asks is really a valuable tool Mm. or giving you some ideas on, great, I could ask that because look what that did. That drew out a more of an emotional response because it made the client have to think. It made the client have to tune inward and really connect with the answer. And when I asked you, who is Craig, it made you have to really tune in and think, who is Craig? And I don't know if you noticed or if Dana noticed or anybody else who'll be watching, but you started off with the third person, well, Craig is... And then as soon as you said something that you connected with, that you're here to serve and help others, you'll put other people first, that's just who you are, you then owned it and you said, I just do that, that's what I do. And then the rest of the description was all in the first person. So in other words, really underneath all these fears, you are very connected to who you are as a person, but the fears sometimes cloud that knowledge and take away your authentic authenticity to be able to show up as the person that you are, as the person who serves, the person who cares, the person who really wants to help others. And you know, that's who you are. That's pretty much it. You know, um, I guess, you know, for all my life, I've sort of felt like there's, there's just, there's just more, there's more to life, you know, and there's, and, like I want to help people get to that point. I want to help the people that are hanging on the edge of the cliff there. And they're just, they're just, they're just trying to find who they are. They're trying to find their purpose in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I've been there for a huge part of my life, trying to try and discover that. Um, and I've come to some pretty powerful realizations and what a blessing to be able to help people discover who they are and to help them reach their higher potential. I mean, that's, that's a big calling right there. So. So with these realizations that you've had, yeah. can you tell me the top three things that you've learned about having to hang on the cliff, dangling from the fears in order to find yourself? What is it? What are those powerful lessons that you learned? Can you share a couple with me? Yeah, well, I think, I think Vicky, one of the really, really big things, man, is just, wow. Like I was, I was unaware of just how much stinking thinking was going through my mind. Like, I had no idea like the things that I was, that I was saying to myself on a, on a daily basis and through the course, it's really helped me become more self-aware of that internal dialogue. And that explains a lot of things in my life that I've kind of gone through with being unconfident in myself and so forth. And it's taken me, you know, like 35 years or something, you know, to discover that I've had all these real negative chatters going on. Um, and I think that, that helping people become more self-aware of what they're truly saying to themselves. And we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts every single day. And as you say, 85% of those thoughts are negative. And man, when you actually unclutter those thoughts and you actually put them down and you realize what you're saying to yourself, like a mirror reflecting to yourself, I mean, that's, I mean, that opens up a whole lot of things, man. It, it certainly does. And I think that's been massive. That's been huge for me personally. It's, yeah. I'm not sure if that really answers your question, but I just felt like I had to say that, Vicky. That was, thank you. That was important. Thank you. Really important. Uh, and, and you know what? I actually think that there's a lot of people, a lot of students and graduates who would absolutely agree with you right there and be, be nodding their head going, yeah. Yep, I know exactly what you mean because that's what I went through too when I was going through the course. It's something that I hear consistently from students when they realise and become aware and start actually paying attention and catching their self-talk. 
it's something that a lot of people, er, nearly every single student goes through that whole experience because it's just something that they haven't actually done before. And it's so, so important. And when you have that knowledge and you've lived that experience of becoming awake and conscious and understanding that your thoughts don't always speak the truth mm. because you understand where your thoughts came from, what the, the neuroscience behind our thinking and the programs that have been formed throughout our childhood that have been conditioned through consistent repetition have actually done to our thinking. Then once you understand that information, you then have some tools to change that experience of what those thoughts are saying. So, so with that new awareness, that's fantastic because now you can actually explain a lot of those fantastic insights that you had when you were learning to jump off the cliff instead of just dangle there and think, well, I want to, yeah. but I'm not quite sure. I don't know what they'll think. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'll be any good at it, but you jumped anyway so that you could be who you are. So what did you learn about that experience of finding yourself and feeling the fear and doing it anyway, as you said before, connect in with that. What did you learn? What did you learn that ultimately you're then going to have the experience and the wisdom to pass on to your clients, to help them take the leap? I think, uh, I think again, I think for me, Vicky, if I understand the question correctly, um, it all comes back to, 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 to um, self-awareness. Um, so I'm just trying to understand the, these, these, these sort of questions to me. Sorry, I haven't battled sometimes with comprehending um, okay. questions. If you need me to reframe anything, yeah. just, just ask me if you need to. Yeah. If, if you wouldn't mind, just that part, that would be great. Just yep. So, so when we were talking before about yeah. you said you've gone through that, you know, the very thing that you want to help people with to become authentic, yeah. to find their voice, to be who they are. Yeah. Said, because I've done that. I've, I've dangled off the side of a cliff and I've struggled to be authentic and to find myself. And yeah. you said, but, but I felt the fear. I did it anyway. And I, I learned some fantastic insights and got some great gems of information, something along those lines. So what I'm asking is, could you connect in with some of those insights that you experienced by feeling the fear and doing it anyway, that, it, that ultimately enabled you to actually become who you are, to be a bit more authentic and to, to take that leap at that time in your life, which may yeah. have only been recently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that a bit clearer for you? Yeah, it, somewhat for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just about the things that I've that I've that I've sort of learned. That's that's really taken me to that to that next step. Yeah. What do you What um, did you learn? Yeah. So so that way, as you're explaining it to your future clients yeah. who you want to work with that may be trying to become authentic and find their own voice and be who they are and be yeah. okay being seen as they are. Maybe yeah. some of what you've learned, the wisdom of, of what you've learned in, in you becoming yeah. more authentic yeah, is something that you can then impart on them. Yeah. I guess, I guess for me, I think the, 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 um, I guess the big thing for me really is, is there's not to be so um, judgmental um, of yourself. Um, I think that's something that's, that's hidden me for, that's hindered me for, um, a long time, you know. Um, I think that sometimes we are our our own worst um, critic, um, and certainly just through the course, being able to being able just to unpack the way um, that I think about myself and about my my um, abilities, um, and knowing that deep down inside of each and every one of us, like we have this amazing gift each and every one of one of us has this amazing gift and like it's almost sinful not to be able to express that gift you know I'm, I'm not judging anyone who hasn't been able to find the gift just yet but like it's there like do something with it it's there for a purpose like like spread your gift man because we've all got it um and I think that's really, um, well, that really inspires me um, to take that next step, you know. Um, and throughout the course, it's, it's just been great to learn about the, 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 the uh, neuroscience, um, 
about uncovering what fear really is, um, what awareness really is, and how much that impacts us at a physical, mental, emotional level. Um, so there's been a huge amount of things, Vicky, um, that I've taken away and, and um, discovered. But I think if you're just a little less harsh on judging yourself, um, I think that allows you to express your infelicity um, in a way that is that is unique and um, in a way that is unique to you, but it's very, it has a very powerful service to others. Um, and that's me, Vicky, that's me speaking from the heart. I don't know if I've understood the question quite 100%, but that's on my heart that I've got to say. and. I'm just going to say it. Wonderful. But it, it doesn't matter if you answer the question or not, because what you've done is you've connected in with your emotion. Yeah. So there was a gem of wisdom in there that at this very moment with you and this veil in front of you, that's just needing to be prodded a little bit in order for you to push through it. Yes. Would be fantastic advice for you to give to yourself. Pretty much. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And I only use the term advice because it's what you're giving to yourself in your self-talk because we don't generally give advice to our clients. We give supportive, yeah. structured, curious questioning in order to help them illuminate their own self-awareness and come to their own conclusions and discuss possibilities and how we can do that. But we're talking about you and the relationship with yourself here. And this is a great question that you can actually put onto your clients. What advice would you give to yourself? What advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, I'm your coach. I don't want to give you an advice, but what advice would you give to yourself? If your best friend was going through this situation, you could see how talented, how authentic, how real, how gifted they were in being able to help people with the very problems that they've experienced and overcome themselves. And you could see them doubting their abilities. You could see that they're really struggling to put themselves out there. Their fear is holding them back and you just feel for them. Because you feel like, oh, they, they've just got so much to offer. They've got so much to offer people and they know they can do it, but they're just holding themselves back. What would you tell them? What would you tell your best friend who's struggling with this very same problem? What would you tell them? Yeah. What would you tell them? Yeah, I, I would I'll tell them just to really, just, just to get connected to get connected mm -hmm. with their with their thoughts and get connected with their feelings, because um, I mean that's I mean like we hold all of our perceptions and our and our and our thoughts and so forth in our subconscious mind. Um, just to just to unravel that, you know, like what are you what are you telling yourself on a day to day basis? You know, why do you feel the way you feel? Um, like, like a, what shaped your thoughts about the way you feel? Um, just that kind of probing, I think, will develop a lot of um, almost like a, a internal audit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start there and take that step one for yourself. Yeah. Let's take that step one and ask you yeah. to dig deep here a little bit, Craig. Yeah. Just come get present, get connected and dig deep and ask yourself, what are my thoughts saying to me? What are my thoughts telling me at this thought of taking the leap and doing it anyway? What are my thoughts telling me that's holding me trapped behind this thin veil that needs prodding? Um, what are your thoughts creating within you that's making you feel yeah. that that's scary? Um, yeah, I think for me... Um probably stems back to my, my sort of childhood, um, sort of quite a bit of like rejection kind of faced. Um, <sighs> when I was younger. And that's a very scary thing for a child because one of our biggest fears as children is that we don't belong. We don't fit in. Yeah. And, so and I that guess we're rejected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, I guess, you know, it's, it's that fear is that, you know, if I let go of that cliff and I, and, you know, things don't work out, am I going to feel rejected? You know, that, that's, you know, are they, are they going to reject me? Are they going to think, oh man, this, 
this guy's lost it, like he's not good enough and, and all those sort of things. And like, I know people wouldn't necessarily think that, but it's the way that I'm perceiving it to be. Um, so I think I just peeled back a, a pretty big layer there. Um, it's been good. It's, it's a bit hurtful, but it's good. The thing is, we carry around a lot of the hurt that we developed as children that because of those intense emotions and feelings that we experienced as children and because our brains are still developing and we don't quite always know exactly what's going on in the adult world when we're children, when we're a child, we have those intense emotions and in response or reaction to what happens around us. And our little brains are trying to process it as best they can with the limited amount of ability that it has while it's still growing and making new connections. And because the emotions are so overwhelming, they're so intense, and they're often the first time we're experiencing these emotions, and we don't quite understand exactly what it means, we're operating from our lower brain, a very instinctive brain, a very emotive brain. So those, those lower two brains don't have any higher thinking because our brains at that stage is still developing. So it's because of, of that situation with our brains being underdeveloped at early ages when we're experiencing intense emotions that we're trying to come up with a logic of why do I feel the way I do what does this mean we always it always comes out to the meaning what does it mean if my parents yell at me and tell me to go to my room but I wasn't actually doing anything I was just playing with my toys what does it mean if the kids in the school yard say no go away we don't want to play with you what does it mean when one of our parents may leave the home and we don't see them again? Didn't they love me? Was it my fault that they left and went away? And so we feel the rejection. We feel the hurt. We feel the embarrassment. We feel that pain of not belonging. Yep. And we start to try and make sense of those emotions with the limited ability of logical thinking and analytical thinking that we have at that age. And we come up with these ideas, well, Maybe it's because they didn't like me. Maybe because there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm ugly. Maybe I'm too fat. Maybe I'm not smart. Maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm not lovable. And so on and so on and so on. And if we don't have the, the support of somebody around us that is older, wiser, and more mature and able to sit down with us and explain, you know what, darling, even though those kids said those things, and they didn't want to play with you, it may have had nothing to do with you. Maybe that kid at school who was mean at you was actually just reacting and doing the same thing that's been done to him. Um, maybe, you know, yes, or here, here's a good one. Um, maybe daddy and I had an argument and we were stressed about other things and it had nothing to do with you. It's not because you were bad or you were naughty or we didn't want to spend time with you and we're sorry we took out our stress on you. But do you know what stress is? Let's have a talk about that. Or I'm sorry, I was upset and I took my anger out on you and that was wrong with me and I'm sorry. So unless we can give a, a different example, a different perspective to a child in those, those deep emotions, excuse me, those deep emotions, the child doesn't have any other way to interpret them except for in a very centered um in a very centered way where it's all about me it's all about me because as children we're always worried about us it's like what does this mean if somebody does that to me what does it mean for me am i going to have my basic needs met am i going to be taken care of if mommy and daddy split up does that mean i'm going to be living on the streets do if the kids aren't, um, aren't nice to me at school does that mean that i'm going to end up with no friends i'm going to be alone I'm not going to get the love and the connection that I need. So we're looking at it from a basic needs level, a physiological need or physiological needs and our psychological needs. And if those needs aren't met as children, and I'm referring to the, the Maslow hierarchy of needs here. Yeah. So if we, if we stay stuck on having our, not having our needs met on either of those levels as children, that pain stays with us as we grow older. And those, the, the self-talk, the beliefs that have been created out of those feelings that we had no other way of understanding for ourselves at that age, they perpetuate this negative self-talk. And over time, 
every time somebody else does something similar to us as we're growing up, it's just a reminder of that initial pain and that, oh, well, there we go again. I don't belong. There we go again. They rejected me. There we go again. I'm not lovable. So over time and repetition, and how does the brain work, Craig? Yeah. How's the, the brain, brain works through repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill. Yes. So as the brain is just having more and more evidence to create new and greater connections in the brain and the neural networks to support the evidence of I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, if I put myself out there, I get rejected. So there's more evidence there to support that belief until you catch it, change, you challenge it, change, yeah. and then you consistently learn to change that neural pathway from that form of belief, which wasn't quite true when you formed it, but it's just there and it's a program, and it's a pattern and it's easy and it's comfortable and the brain likes what's comfortable and familiar and easy. So unless we learn to challenge that pathway down that way that we've been carrying around with us for a long time, even though it's not based on fact, it was just based on how we felt. If we don't challenge that to disrupt it continuously with all those brain hacks that you learn in module seven to consistently try and shift our thinking, to shift our thinking so we can shift our feelings, create new experiences and new evidence to actually replace the old, then we won't be able to create this new pathway to actually disrupt the old pattern and create the new belief and behavior this way. Yeah. So it's that transition period between, okay, well, that's what my past has been telling me, but am I living in the past? Am I letting the past dictate my future and how I feel now? Or am I actually going to just catch that thought every time I have it, catch that thought, tune into that feeling. It's not always necessary to know where does that feeling come from? Where was the first time that I had that experience? It's not always necessary because all you do when you search for stuff like that, which is what happens with traditional therapies is you relive it as you recall it and then talk it to death. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to talk over and over about something that's already cemented in your neural connections. What we want to do is we want to disrupt the pattern and actually step back from it, disassociate enough so that we can look at it from a new perspective. Of course, at five or at eight or at 12, when that happened, of course, any child at that age would feel or do or react in the same way that you did. Because as children, we all want the same things. We all want to know that we're loved, we're safe, we belong, and that we're going to have our needs met. Not that... <laughs> That just makes complete sense to me, Vicky. Um, and it was great that you brought up the the, the catch, challenge, change because that's well, obviously we covered in the, in the modules as well. But like, I think that's really, really powerful. I think that's a, that's a hugely powerful tool that we that we have not only to to to, um, to um, reflect the mirror into into our own lives, but then to actually help our clients um, move on from those old programmings, those old beliefs and get them moving in a in a in a direction that is that is going to probably serve them at a, at a at a high level and actually help them bust through those those um breakthroughs mm. uh, and, and those roadblocks that we that we uh, tend to face because i think what you said it like in the course um that we repeat the same thoughts or like over and Majority. over and over. yeah so if we're always stuck in those old belief and thought patterns, it's no wonder we find ourselves just hitting up against a brick wall continuously. Even when we tell ourselves that we want to be motivated to change, motivation is not enough unless you actually go down the route of actually changing some of that old programming. So that was a really, really big takeaway point for me. Thanks for reminding me as well. That That's good. okay. So how can we take this? And apply it to you at the moment. Yeah, I think you know, Vicky. Um, I think I need to, I need to go back a bit more. I need to go back. I need to go over those 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 uh, those modules about the 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 uh, the uh, catch challenge um, change. Um, I think that's something that I went over, but I need to revisit that again, and I need to put that into into more practice. Um, because I think that's probably, that's going to help me pierce through that veil. I think that's going to give me the, 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 
the uh, sense that, you know, like I am actually in control of my thoughts. Like, you know, it's not, it's not a kind of sentence, the, that old programming. I can actually get through that. So you can. And the good thing about the catch challenge change is that you can actually use that for any specific problem, as well as just for all of the negative stuff that's going on up in your head. So the more that you clear out and you shift and change, then the, the clearer, the easier it is to actually catch the, the other stuff that's getting in the way. But when you're, when you're in a situation where you feel held back, yeah, which is where you are now. Yeah specifically use catch count challenge change in relation to exactly what it is that you are stuck on, on, on exactly what it is that is creating the thoughts that's putting the veil up in order for you to actually poke it enough so that you can rip it down, pull it to the side, reveal who you are and allow yourself to be seen. So use that catch challenge change in specifically focused, specifically focused on this situation that you find yourself in as to why you're stuck in the first place. Yeah. You're trying to allow yourself to take that step forward and be seen. Yeah. I guess that's, yeah, I guess, I guess it's fear. One part fear, one part rejection. Um, that's the way I've been feeling. That's preventing me from kind of moving forward. Um, so for me, it's important to be able to, uh, to identify those thoughts, um, acknowledge them and, and then be able to actually challenge them. And actually to go back not too long ago where I actually had to do some practical coaching and I coached quite a few sessions. So I have the evidence there that, that I can coach and that you know, to change that kind of thought pattern from being fearful and, and, and kind of rejected um, into saying that, that I am a good coach. I have a lot to offer and Therefore, I don't need to stay stuck where I am. Uh, to me, that's my kind of interpretation of the of the of the um, catch challenge change, mm -hmm. like moving along that kind of cycle. Yep. Yeah. So what you could do is, first off, it's about catching all those negative thoughts so that yeah. you can identify every single one of them. Because what happens is when you become aware of that self talk and those limiting beliefs that are hovering there in the background of your thinking, as soon as you bring them into your conscious awareness, and especially if you write them down, yes. if you write them down, straight away they lose a lot of power. Because straight away you can actually see those little suckers that have been hiding up there, mostly unconsciously, yeah. and you get to actually confront them. So, it, you know, a, a nice little additional C there is to catch and confront. Catch and confront. Catch and confront. Yeah. Yep. So when you take it out, you write it down, you can actually look at it for what it is. This is where you can actually use this uh, slight analogy of I'm going to pull it out, I'm going to reveal it, and I'm going to look at it as authentically as it is, and it's all of its lies, and I'm going to call it out. I'm going to call it out, I'm going to confront it, I'm going to challenge it. Because all it's saying to me are lies, all it's saying to me are fears. All it's doing is trying to keep me small and keep me, keep me stuck. Now, the other way you can look at this as, yes, it's coming from that fear-based thinking from our instinctive survival episode, because it, not episode, our instinctive survival instinct, because a lot of those fears when we were children, a lot of those worries and concerns and those, those deep, deep feelings were coming from a place of fear. If they don't want to play with me and I'm all alone, I'm going to be all alone. And that's scary. If, if I don't feel like I fit in my family, then where do I belong? That's scary. If my mum and dad yell at me and make me feel bad and, and they're the people that I turn to for safety and they're, they're yelling at me and they're angry and tell me to go to my room and I'm alone, then that's scary because I'm alone. So a lot of these fear-based thinking uh, and the beliefs and all of those feelings that we experienced as children, they're coming from that survival instinct. Yeah. So they are based in fear and a lot of it irrational fear. So when you pull it out and you confront it, you challenge it and you see it for what it is. A lot of that is just like you are talking to little Lizzie, your lizard brain, your reptilian brain. It's like you're talking to little Lizzie because she's sitting on your shoulder and she's going, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Remember what happened last time when we did that? Don't do that. That's scary. 
And she's coming from a place of love. I mean, our brains, just like our body, that whole interconnected mind-body relationship, it's designed to keep us safe. It's designed to protect us. Because you know what, Craig? Your body loves you. Your body loves you. Even when you don't treat it right, even when you talk nasty to it, your body says, you know what, I don't care. I'm still going to love you anyway. And I'm still going to show up and do what I need to do to keep you alive because that's my job. That's what I'm programmed to do. So when you hear Lizzie on your shoulder, when you decide I'm going to catch, challenge and change this negative loop that's in my head that's preventing me from being authentic, from pulling back the veil and being seen, even if not everybody likes what they see, that's okay. I'm not going to please everybody. But can I be okay with me? Yeah. Can I be okay with me first enough to put myself out there and help the people I know I can help and help the people that want to be helped by me? So when little Lizzie's trying to hold you back there, try and look at it if you can, if it's helpful. Some people find this is helpful. Other people just like to stick to catch, challenge, change or other methods. Yeah. But if you look at it as, thank you, Lizzie. Thank you so much because I know that you're coming from a place of love. I know you're trying to protect me. I know you're worried that I'm going to feel like that small little child, rejected and alone and like I don't belong. But I'm not that little child anymore. I'm 30-something and I'm deliberately putting myself in this position because I want to do this. So thank you for alerting me to, to the potential danger, but I'm not that little kid. I'm a grown adult now and I can recognize if something's going to happen and I can protect myself. Something I couldn't do when I was a kid. I can protect myself now and I've got you to help me. So thank you so much, but shut up and let me do this anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much, Vicky. I think that's pretty much spot on. Um, pretty much spot on kind of with where I'm at, but it's given me a lot of hope and, and, and a lot of encouragement that um, just, just to just to view my particular situation in a completely different perspective that I haven't maybe quite been able to see before, um, and that would be hugely powerful. Like I know that if that you know, like with what you've done with me now, and with the coursework that I've been able to learn, if I can help people in that way, like you've helped me now to gain that extra perspective, like I think that's hugely hugely. Um, and, empowering i think it's empowering for the for the clients but like for me that's going to bring out the real raw true authenticity of who i am and and what i want to do so that's been awesome um that's given me a lot of encouragement to to get out there and do it you know um just you know just tell lizzie to shut up a little bit there and you know go ahead and do it I mean, you don't have to call, you, you know, call it Lizzie. You don't have to assume yeah. she's female. Yeah. You can call him Larry if you really yeah. want. Thanks, yeah. Larry. Yeah. <laughs> By doing that, you're, you're, you're giving a name to what's actually happening and you're also disassociating yourself from that fear and understanding that's coming from a deeper physiological place within your mind and body that's really just trying to keep you safe. They're just trying to remind you not to pull you down and drag you down and keep you st stuck, but it's just a way that the body's trying to remind you, be safe, be careful. And sometimes that, that, that can protect you and it can actually save your life. But more often than not, because the brain is defaulted to negative thinking, because the brain defaults to ex reasons why you shouldn't do something because you know, it's looking for potential danger. It's trying to, it's using, it's using all of its, its experiences, all of the events and the, the experiences from your past that have provided evidence that certain things aren't safe, it's just trying to prick up and remind you, just be careful here because I'm trying to keep you safe and I don't know what's out there. And if you do this, I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know if you're going to be safe and then I don't know if I'm going to be able to protect you. And ultimately, that's what your body wants to do. That's what your brain is trying to program your body to do. Yeah. So... If you can understand that that's what it's doing, but it's not always operating from factual stuff, it's, it's operating from conditioned fear from a very, very long time ago, yeah. which may not be relevant to the situation that you're in now, that may not be relevant to the circumstances that you're in now, that may not be relevant and absolutely won't be relevant to the wisdom and 
the maturity that you have now and the abilities that you have now that you didn't have way back then because you're constantly evolving and changing your brain doesn't know that yeah your brain's just like well i still remember all this stuff that happened then and how it made you feel and i didn't like that so i just want to try and keep you safe now so if you can remember that that's what it's doing but also remember that it's operating from a from a memory bank yeah and the meaning that it attached to that memory bank and you're able to override that you can override that and the the best way to do that is to be in a place of acceptance thank you so much for reminding me of those things but i'm choosing to do this because i want to have a greater experience because i truly want to help people and i know i can i want to help them in the way that i was helped I want to help them get unstuck from the place that I was stuck in. And I'm choosing to do this. I don't know what's going to happen, but I've got an idea. I've got a little bit, I'm a little bit more prepared. I've planned a little bit. So you don't need to worry so much, but thank you. And I know you're there if I ever need you, but I'm going to do this anyway. So then it's a, it's a place of acceptance. It's a place of come with me. I'm not telling you to go away and, and, and don't pester me anymore. What I'm saying is just quiet down a little bit and trust me. Trust me that I'm going to move forward because I want because I want to. I think that's a that's a hugely powerful distinction. Um, you know, just I think acceptance alone, I think is is just that that's pretty powerful. But but you know, also like the way you were kind of talking about it, how how that lizard part of our brain, like it's not something that we actually need to be fearful of it we don't need to kind of fight against it that like we can actually accept it and to be thankful and be like you know thanks for the job that you do to actually to actually keep me alive um yeah like, thanks i know like, you've got my back i've got my back and come along for the ride um as i go forth and i reach my higher potential um yeah. i think that's a pretty powerful distinction right there for me actually ricky you know to see it differently in that, in that way. Mm. So if you then mold that together and you trust that that part of you is really just trying to operate from a protective angle and you accept that, that that's what's happening, but you're telling that part of you, I'm going to do this anyway. I know the warnings. I know that the past experience has, you know, maybe not been as what I'd wanted, but things are different now. I'm different now. I know you've got my back. Thank you so much, but come with me. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's discover this together. Yeah. When you can do that and you come more at a place of connectedness, then really what that equates to is you are learning to trust yourself. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. Learn to trust yourself. That's, that's big. And I'm going to take that a step further. You're also learning to love yourself. Yeah. When you can love yourself and, and feel like you belong in here, then the more that you take ownership of that, the more that you tell yourself, I matter, I'm significant, I belong, I have gifts to share. And I trust myself and love myself enough to take these first steps, even though they're scary. I'm going to trust myself that I know enough and I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to love myself enough to keep gently pushing myself forward. What you're essentially doing is you are letting that inner part of you, the little boy that's carrying around the herd of rejection, you're letting him know that, He's safe, that you love him and that he belongs with you and that you're going to take care of him now, that he doesn't need to try and hold you back now and try and drag you back because he's afraid, but that you're letting him know he's safe. You're taking care of him and that he can trust you because you love him and you're going to do what's right by him. Yeah, no, amen to that. Yeah, I take that on board. That's that's um, 
that's pretty powerful, Vicky, um, for me to, 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 to hear that and, uh, and to replay what you've said um, in my mind. Um, and now it's just made me feel like I can do this now. You know, <laughs> I am equipped to, to, to uh, move forward. And um, hell, I'm just going to do it. You know, because I accept myself and I love myself and I, I don't have to allow the, the, the past experiences and past stories to kind of dictate my future. Um, so some pretty big, powerful distinctions there for me, Vicky. You know, Wonderful. and I can see how they can how they can help my clients as well. You know, um, hugely. Now, sometimes we can consciously say and know that we love ourselves and we trust ourselves. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that those past programs aren't going to interject occasionally. They're still going to do that, but with this greater sense of connectedness. It becomes much easier through repetition, through conscious, consistent, daily repetition of thanking Lizzie or Larry, shutting them down, saying, come with me, trust me, and constantly reminding yourself and that inner child, if need be, that yeah. you're safe. I'm here. I'm in charge now. I'm taking care of you and you're loved. So it's sometimes it's that you have to continue that process so that it's not just consciously that you know that, but it starts to become a deeper level of awareness so that subconsciously those parts of you that have been carrying the hurt and the, the limiting beliefs and the negativity for so long starts to understand that it's okay. Maybe I don't always need to sound the alarm every time, you know, he's doing something new and unfamiliar and, and I'm freaking out about it. Yeah. It's just consistently reminding yourself that you're valuable. You're significant. You have gifts to offer consistently staying connected to your real self, your authentic self and trusting that connectedness to move you forward. I think that's going to become my, my uh, daily practice uh, from, from now on, Vicky, you know, um, right. I think if anything, if I'm going to be teaching client these, these, these uh, powerful, um, we we'll call them modalities or techniques. So it, it's kind of insights. Um, for sure, we have to actually practice them ourselves, you know, in order to be able to help people, you know, get past their breakthroughs, you know, because some of the stuff I'm going through and what other coaches are going through, they, you know, our clients are going to be going through very, very similar or similar circumstances and, and um, experiences. Mm -hmm. So we've got to kind of speak from a, from a place in my heart of, of um, taking, taking ownership, I believe, of what we've learned and, and that, you know, and, and by doing so that we, you know, that we also reveal to our clients, they were also normal people too, you know, like, like. That's part of being real, isn't it? It's part, part of being real and authentic. Yeah, yeah. So I'm human too. I've made mistakes too. I've been where you are too. Yeah, no, completely. I, I really, really strongly I identify with that. Absolutely. All of it. So what are you going to do? from today what's what's the what's those first steps that you can take i mean is the, does the veil still feel like it's there oh no look for here um, i think i think what's going to happen is that like i'm going to take action um i'm going to do it today i'm going to put myself out there and amongst the uh, facebook group um mm -hmm. i sort of feel that like what will happen is that like i'll probably still have some of those old kind of thoughts and beliefs coming in but I think from talking to you now I, and, and um, just, you know, going deeper into my own understanding of myself, like I can actually, I can actually be okay with some of those thoughts. I don't, I don't have to allow them to take such a deep rooted hold in my life. And I can actually use the catch, challenge, change, confront method. And I think as long as I do that, and as long as I make that a habit, um, and reminding myself that I am good enough and that I do have the skills, I do have the abilities. Um, well, I'm going to get through, you know. Um, so, that's one, so that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start making that as my daily routine. 
just as it is brushing my teeth every morning. It's going to be the mindset work to work on. Great. Jump into the Facebook group and put myself out there to get my practical coaching clients. Mm -hmm. so, 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 yeah, there you go. I look forward to your post later today. Yeah, brilliant. Awesome. Accountability is a good thing too, so I, <laughs> I appreciate that. So, um, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll do that today. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, oh, thank you, Dana. Wow, that was powerful what I heard. Awesome. Thanks, Dana. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry I couldn't uh, um, keyboard you back. I've got the um, laptop sitting on a higher elevated desk here. So <laughs> type while I was talking to Vicky. So thanks very much for, um, for, for being here too and, and for listening as well. And hopefully that's helped you out as well. And uh, good luck for you in the course as you uh, go on through. That's very nice. See, she says, see you again, Craig. Yes, that's a, always a good one to, to ask Dana at the end of the session is what steps can you take? And the, the next thing to follow that up with is what steps are you willing to take today? And you've already said what you're going to take today because you're going to take action, which is great. Yeah. So what this really reminds us is that we, we can't solve everybody's, you know, challenges in the one session, but we can certainly get some breakthroughs in order for them to take the first steps. And then beyond that is continuing to go deeper into what it is that is holding them back, what's challenging them, and continue to help them take, take forward steps in their pursuit of becoming empowered in their own lives, to be able to take charge and feel confident in living the life that they came to you to help them live. Mm. So you can see that, you know, we can do a lot of work in one session. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't quite realize how powerful that would be. In, in, I mean, I wasn't even expecting to get, to get coached today, but just having this experience, um, like a lot's been uncovered in one session. Um, like that's just one session. <laughs> yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, sometimes these things actually work out for the best and clearly this is something that's been holding you back and keeping you stuck. And the best thing to do is when you feel stuck, reach out, reach out, talk to a friend, but sometimes the best thing to do is reach out and talk to someone who knows how to help you because that way you're actually going to be able to dig deeper into your own answers in order for you to really take that action that you know you can take once you peel back the layers and you reveal the fear and what's really going on underneath that so that you can understand, well, a lot of that's just old stuff. It's not true. It's not based on fact. A lot of it's just fear based and a lot of it's really not relevant to who I am now and who I want to be or who I really am. So when you can peel back that layer and you can look at the fear, catch, challenge it, then you've got an opportunity to change it, to shift it and consistently keep doing that. So you're living the life that you want to live, not the life that your brain has already been programmed from living in the past. We can live in the past, sure, but we don't really create anything new because if our mind's always going over and over and over the stuff that we've already experienced and lived through and solidifying the meanings around it that keep us stuck and still staying in that place of fear, we're never really free to create the lives that we want to live. And we think we don't have choice, but we do. We do have choice. We do have choice over what we think and what we feel and what we do and what we create. It just means that we have to take the power back from our mind by understanding how our mind works in order for us to be able to use it to our advantage. Yeah. <laughs> and you now know how to do that, which is fantastic. Thank you, Dana. Uh, yeah, um, that's been awesome. And I think like that's what's so powerful about um, you know being a holistic lifestyle coach and like in the way I see it, is like you're kind of walking this journey with your client, like you're holding this flashlight for them, like like you're eliminating the, their sort of path. And then like once they get once they get really, really comfortable and they can see the bends around the path, like you give them that flashlight. And then they start illuminating their own path and they start shining light into their own areas. Yes. Uh, We're just the, the guide. Yeah. Yeah. And once you were the, like, once, like once you were the guide, but now you are helping them to be their own guide. Um, I think that's pretty powerful <laughs> to me. It is anyway. 
Yeah, it is powerful. So just realize, just take that in for a minute and absorb that fact that you being a holistic life coach and being able to illuminate those areas in people's lives that they just can't see for themselves in order to then hand the torch over to them so they can light the way in their own life, that is powerful. That is a powerful gift, Craig. You recognize what that gift is because you can do it. Own Amen. It. <laughs> so own it. Take the power in your own life and pass that gift on. And that I shall do. Excellent. Wonderful. So we didn't have a group session today, but we had something even better to be able to create as a replay for our students and graduates. We had a one-on-one -on -one and we had Dana listening in and uh, giving her thoughts as well, which was fantastic because it's fantastic for Dana to be a part of this, even though she's at work. Um, thank you, Dana, for participating and being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I know you're a busy woman. You work many days of the week. Um, so how do you feel now? Uh, Vicky, I think if I had to put it into a, into a few words, uh, I, I think I feel um, lighter. You know, I think when you kind of hold on to your, onto those old thought patterns and those old beliefs, they weigh you down spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Mm. So when you feel lighter, I think for me, there's, there's been a big burden off my back. Um, therefore, if I feel lighter, I just feel, I feel, more, I feel more connected. You know, I feel more peaceful. Um, so connected, peaceful, and lighter, those three. Words Excellent. Thanks, Vicky. Thanks for sharing, Craig. See you again. Thank you so much, Dana. Take care. Have a good day. And uh, in uh, Taylor Swift's famous words, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. So sometimes what you can do is whenever you feel weighed down, by the crap that's going up in your head, go outside in the sunshine and literally shake your entire body. Shake the energy that is attached to those old feelings and generate new feelings. Remember the mind influences the body, the body influences the mind. Thoughts influence feelings, feelings influence thoughts. So if you wanna make a change in either your thinking or your feeling, you can pick one or the other, it doesn't matter because it will have an effect on the opposite. So if you feel low, if you feel heavy and you can't quite even identify the thoughts, just go outside, shake it off. Shake, 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 shift that energy, create that lightness, shake off the heaviness, the burdens, and you'll notice that that will actually create a positive, um, a positive experience in your thinking as well. Because it, you can't help but influence one or the other. You can't help it. They're both connected. So it doesn't matter if you start at the thinking or if you start at the physical level and you shift the energy, it's going to have a positive influence on the other. So just a little, uh, a little quirky thing there to note that you can go and shake it off and you can hear Taylor in your head or not. It doesn't matter. You can have music or not, but it's a fantastic exercise to go and do that. And then ground yourself with some nice deep belly breaths yeah. and Get focused again on that new quality thinking and feeling that you've generated whenever you need to. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Thanks, yeah. Dana. <laughs> no, totally, Vicky. Um, yeah, I, I, again, that that's a great, great, great tools that I can that I can use for myself as well, and 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 um, wisdom that I can impart with 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 my clients along their own journey too. So, yeah. Excellent. Amazing. Thank you so much for being vulnerable today. And uh, even though you weren't anticipating being the client or having a one-on-one -on -one with me, thank you very much for sharing and for being open to the process and allowing yourself to go into those spaces in your mind to start to see things differently. Because that's a shift right there. Um, biggest shift I've had in, 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 in a long time. So um, thank you very much for, uh, for helping me confront the areas that I was you know, not always willing to reveal. And I think in being vulnerable, I think it's, it's, it's also a strength in vulnerability and thanks for revealing my strength. You're very, very welcome. Thanks, Dana. Thank Thanks, you everybody else for watching the replay. I hope that you have taken a lot of great insights and gems from this replay when you watch it. Thank you so much, Craig.
Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Vicky. See you, Dana. Bye. Bye.